what is fantasy architecture? For me, it's a, it's a loose term, not an academic one, but I think of fantasy architecture as any architecture, real or imagined, two-dimensional or three-dimensional, that is really about the psychological effect of space rather than about practicality or functionality. So, for example, all those ancient temples and churches, those are perfect examples of fantasy architecture. They really are there just to scare you or impress you or create an effect, and who cares how they're really used. There's always been fantasy architecture. Through the Middle Ages, people were imagining what was the Tower of Babel like, or what does, the, what does heaven look like? What are the ideal cities? In the Renaissance, you had all those grottos, those, uh, and the uh, Enlightenment, all those fantasies, those fantasy temples. You had people making art based on imagined uh, gardens and imagined palaces and things like that. Then you have people like Piranesi come along, who got started making pictures of Roman ruins and ended up making these etchings of incredible imaginary prisons that uh, were really stage sets more than anything else, but all about architecture at the same time. Fast forward to the 20th century, you have M.C. Escher, very much inspired by Piranesi, doing drawings of architecture that is impossible, but you nevertheless believe it when you look at it. So all of these things, for me, are wonderful uh, ways for the mind to expand, and they're wonderful starting points for something actual, three-dimensional, that can draw you in, that can be a space that really exists, but is still fantastic on some level. ready to begin a box, I start by making drawings. Just like an architect, floor plans and elevation plans, and it begins to simplify and define itself, and then I begin to get a little bit hooked in. Once I've made a good set of plans, then I have to think about what woods are going to be appropriate to really get the, f the feeling that I want. I like to combine a dark wood and a light wood so that I can have the sense of light coming from within darkness. After I've selected the wood and laid laid up my veneer panels and then finished them, gotten them all ready to use, then I start cutting the pieces. And assembling the box. And that's a long, slow process. Any A box can have anywhere from uh, 200 to 400 separate pieces of wood in it. As I build it, I always come to a point where I realize that it's not going to work the way I do. There's something that I didn't foresee, something that is going to run into something else because I have to figure out what the moving parts are, what's going to be attached to what. So I have to change the box. And when that happens, I always feel that's a good sign, that a box should never end up the way I planned it. It needs to take on a life of its own. People ask me, why are they boxes? Why don't you just make sculptures? Um, but for me, it's really important that they're boxes. I like the fact that there's more to it than what you initially see. That there's a sense all from the beginning that there are hidden spaces, that there's an inside, that um, you have to figure out how to get into it. I like the fact that as you open things, the spaces change, the visual, whole visual aspect changes, so that it's, a, it's an always changing sculpture. And I like the fact that while I'm making it, if I'm thinking about how it's going to open, that changes the way I build it and the way I see it, and it often makes new things happen. 
Uh, so it's a constraint, if you will, that really en enriches the whole process and the end to have something to fight against. This box has to open. This structure can't just exist by itself and be looked at from a distance. It has to be manipulated, interacted with, and that makes the design more compelling. Certainly, I think that we all find fa containers fascinating, that we need containers. We have stuff that has to be contained, both physical stuff and emotional stuff. We are very aware that we are containers, that we hold things that other people can't see, that we can choose to let out or not. We're aware that our bodies are containers for the soul, for the personality. All of those things, I think, that awareness of ourselves makes us identify containers. Uh, not just to see them as containers, but to sort of feel a certain resonance with them. So to me, the more that you can put into a container uh, as you're building it, uh, the more you can build on that sense of resonance. Thank you.